before the video actually starts, I just want to address a few things. Also, there are timestamps to skip this part, so please feel free to go in the description and skip to the actual theory if you don't care about this section. So, if you're here because you've seen my previous video regarding Moldaver, you will know that my theory was likely very wrong. Not only that, but you will also know that most of that video was a recap. This was done to provide context to the theory that I was trying to convey. I appreciate the criticism. I always take it into account when going forward with my channel. The previous theory was intended to be a recap video with the theory of Moldaver being the wrap up at the end, but in execution, it didn't work out as planned. That being said, I'm glad I did it, because even the title states that it is a recap, and I'm glad I had a general recap of the show on my channel regardless of how long it was. Anyway, in this video, I took some time to actually collect my thoughts more, and although I did fully believe that Moldaver could have been a synth in my previous video, I am here to say that the theory has changed. Aside from the toxic comments and other ones that were honestly reasonable constructive criticisms, there were also some who threw out theories that disproved mine, and made me think a little more logically at the situation at hand when it came to Moldaver. As we know, Moldaver was a whistleblower who spoke in secret against the vault Tech Corporation due to them seizing her company and stopping all of her progress on the Cold Fusion technology that she was developing. We see her as slightly younger in the pre-war scene, and also still looking a bit younger in the section where we see a flashback to Rose, Lucy's mother, and what myself and many others assume to be Moldaver's lover, although it isn't made explicitly clear in the show if they were or not. Regardless, they were very close nonetheless, and it made for a touching moment at the end of the show. Speaking of the end of the show, and honestly any other part that was set in the year 2296, she does appear to have aged from her pre-war and Shady Sand scenes. This is how my old theory would be disproven. Check the description for timestamps to skip this part, but here's a quick rundown of why I thought she could have been a synth. In my previous video, it was stressed to me that people find it extremely hard for someone to travel from the Institute, which was in Boston on the East Coast of America, all the way over to Los Angeles on the West Coast, which would presumably be by foot. My thoughts to explain that away were that we had seen characters do this in the past, the biggest example being Harold, featured in Fallout 1, 2, and 3, where he journeyed from the west to the east across the duration of the games. We have also seen the use of cars in Fallout, monorails, transit systems, and vertebrates, all very plausible ways of getting around, I assume. I also assume that since she had connections to Siggy from the Enclave, and that it was stated that he was a defector from the Commonwealth, it was safe to say that Siggy was from the Commonwealth of Fallout 4, in Boston, where the Institute was located and where the Fallout 4 next-gen update pushes the narrative that the Enclave being there would be canon, presumably. So, Moldaver being a synth created in the Institute before it seemingly is canonically destroyed due to the Pridwin being featured in the show, therefore telling us that the Brotherhood ending of Fallout 4 is canon, led me to believe that she met up with Siggy and he helped her escape Boston due to coursers chasing her down, etc, etc, etc. Who cares about that theory? Synths can't age. The most likely possibility is that yes, and let me explain why, Moldaver was cryogenically frozen. This is what everyone assumes. Cryo. Such an obvious explanation to the point that I didn't even want to believe it, and ran with the theory of her being a Gen 3 synth. I mean, how many locations have we seen with cryogenic technology at this point? There's Vault 111 from Fallout 4, which is where the main character is from and such a huge focus in the main storyline, and we also now have it in Vault 31. There are also some other similar technologies keeping other characters alive, like the LeapX program that Brad Burton, the creator of Nuka-Cola, was put into, where his head was kept alive in a jar. And then we have Robert House from New Vegas, who was also kept alive due to a highly advanced life support system. But that left his body as a husk of what it once was, and as a result, he honestly ended up being mainly just a computer screen. Cryo was too obvious for me to believe since it seemed so overused, but I'm now understanding that it is possibly becoming more of a standard in the series. So, since seemingly the only other option in Fallout would be for Moldaver to either take the mysterious serum from Fallout 4 that basically grants eternal life, or to simply hop into a cryopod for around 200 years, I think it's safe to say that she was in a cryogenic slumber. The main issue would be, how did she wake up and get released back into the wasteland? Where was she located? These things could easily be explained, and I'm sure we will get the answers for them in Season 2, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and put out the idea that maybe she managed to get cryogenically frozen in the same place that Cooper Howard's wife, Barb, was presumably frozen as well. We can assume Barb is still alive and frozen, since in the finale of Season 1, Coop says, Where's my f family. This would theoretically mean that since Barb was a higher up at vault Tech just like Hank, most higher ups at the company had some sort of plan to keep themselves alive far into the future. We see this with Hank and all the residents from Fall 31. We see it with Bud, who was turned into a robot, even with Dr. Braun in Fallout 3, kept alive forever in a Tranquility Lane lounger. It makes perfect sense for Barb to also have some sort of location where she went when the bombs fell, where she also entered presumably Cryo and is still there during the year 2296, waiting to be awoken. Coop says, where's my family? 
family, but I don't realistically know how he could have got his daughter to safety, as they were together when the bombs fell, and if he reunited her with her mother, then Coop would already know where they both are, and wouldn't need to demand answers for their location. I'm guessing he still sees his ex-wife as family, and that's why he said it in that moment, but I'm not too sure at this point. Regardless, Barb knew when the bombs were going to fall, and she definitely checked herself into one of the cryopods somewhere in a location that Hank also knows of. I'm guessing since Moldava reveals that she knows Barb, that in the panic of the world falling apart, she managed to enter the same presumable vault that Barb went to, and they both remained frozen until somehow Moldaver was awoken. I would imagine with just like the beginning of Fallout 3's DLC, Broken Steel, spoiler alert, the Brotherhood nurses you back to life after an extremely critical injury. We might see Season 2 begin with the Brotherhood also saving Moldaver from the shot she took to the stomach. Yes, it seems like she dies, but maybe she simply passed out due to the loss of blood, and is in critical condition, but savable. Moldaver being alive in Season 2 will also allow for more flashbacks to Shady Sands, as well as flashbacks to explain how she survived all this time. But that also can be explained through a flashback from Barb if we find the story following her at some point. My main question from all of this, however, is why didn't Coop try and find Moldaver after all of the chaos ended? He clearly wanted to talk to her, but instead went after Hank, since Hank also knew where his wife could be. But the guy flew away and seemingly gained tons of distance on Coop. Either way, what do you think of this theory? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.